Hey everyone, my name is Josh Gordon. I'm here for the Developer Show with Cheryl and Doug. Um, so Cheryl, could you tell me a little bit about the Magenta Project and your role on the team? Yeah, so the Magenta Project is really focused on how uh, machine learning has a role in art and expressivity and how it can extend the human creative process. So that starts with generative models research, but then goes into creating tools that developers can use to create these uh, these access entry points into using these models for art and creativity. So one of the things that I think the Magenta project has done an extraordinarily good job of is making reproducible software and demos that other developers can try. So could you tell me about a couple of your favorite demos that you've released over the past few years? Hi, yeah, we've done a lot of demos. Um, I think the goal of these demos has been to engage the developer community and to bring artists and musicians and creative coders to work together with us on these machine learning problems. I particularly like uh, a project that Cheryl talked about today, Performance RNN, which uh, learns how to generate something that's kind of half a composition and half a performance because all of the nuanced velocities and dynamics of a piano performance are there and I really love the new music VAE stuff that's coming out where we're able to kind of explore an embedding space and some really cool um, uh, JavaScript based tools developed around uh, uh, tensorflow.js um, that turn things on uh, for, for everybody and I particularly love the idea that we have other developers that are not Googlers taking our, uh, our JavaScript interface and, and playing with things themselves. So actually I have one question for you Doug. So you talk a lot about generative models for Magenta in the context of art and music. What do you think the future might hold for generative models? I'm perhaps biased because I work on this every day, but what I see is that the overall field of generative models is going to sweep through in the next decade and become a major, major part of machine learning research. Um, I think all you have to do is look at what we have with, with Translate, end-to-end, sequence-to-sequence based translation, and think, okay, we can start to get some beautiful nuanced translations when we pass between, for example, English and Japanese. What can we do if we start to generate from these models and try to train these models to help us write, help us uh, do visual art, uh, help us communicate in different ways. Um, think of Smart Reply, right? You get that one relevant response. Now imagine Smart Reply, but it's helping you craft whole paragraphs. It's still your message. It's still you communicating, but you're seeing machine learning help you help you solve that problem. Um, I think the um, the future is very, very bright for generative models, and uh, very excited to be part of it. Cheryl, another thing that I really, really like about Magenta is how easy it is to use the demos that you've released. Can you tell me a little bit about your Docker images and the notebooks and the different uh, demos that are available on the website for developers to try? For developers, of course, it's all in GitHub, open source, and you can contribute to the projects as well. But there's also Colabs, and I think Colabs recently released just an amazing entry point into training and running Magenta models. Um, and outside of that, we have just the demos that get built out of it, anyone can use. So developers, artists, you could have no programming experience and be able to still explore these generative spaces. You know, Cheryl, I'd add to this that um, the fact that a JavaScript developer was able to play around with some of our tools has led us to go to go full in on developing um, magenta.js that's heavily integrated with tensorflow.js and also is pull, able to pull in from uh, p5 and other commonly used tools for visualization and i think that i like i love the idea that that via good you know working as working with our developers e you know even creative coders someone who doesn't think of themselves as a developer but they like to hack i want to see people continue to take our ideas and and twist them around a little bit like make something that we didn't quite expect and and i think we're getting much closer as we get simpler and simpler tools and, and ways to use uh, our, our research um, in the open source community. And one last question, where is the best place for developers to go to learn more about Magenta and get started? All right, this is where you go. You go to g.co slash magenta and you'll find everything there, blog posts, references to publications, uh, the demos themselves will be linked there, and finally, Last but not least, the Magenta discussion group where we want to really cultivate an uh, open community for people to share things they do, whether they're using Magenta or not. We want to really tap into the creative space because we want we know creative creativity is an important part of the human existence and we want to see more of that and how technology can promote that. It's a great answer, Cheryl, and I like the DevRel enthusiasm. <laughs> That's right. so, yeah. so again, Doug and Cheryl, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Josh Gordon for the Developer Show. This has been great. Thanks very much for watching.